starting now. This is your local news leader, News 10 ABC in the morning. Queensbury's vaccine site reopening today. How the state hopes this will combat the rise in COVID cases in the area. New health commissioner starts today here in New York State. What Dr. Mary Bassett plans to focus on in that role. And Saratoga County Sheriff's Office reporting a milestone in their second chance program. They're helping victims and families of overdoses in the area. All that's ahead for you this morning and much more. We thank you for starting your day with us. Hope you're having a good week so far. Welcome so to far. December. Yeah, it's here. Holiday season that? is upon us. And so is meteorological winter. Yeah. Brand new meteorological season kicks off. Today we'll be talking more about that. Set up those custom traffic alerts. Happening today, Queensbury's vaccine site reopening. That's right. This is the state is gearing up to reopen a number of mass vaccination sites to continue to combat COVID-19. News 10's Jen Seeley joins us live outside Aviation Mall as they prepare to open the doors this morning. And this isn't just about the vaccines either, is it, Jen? Correct, Ryan and Christina. The Aviation Mall opening their doors this morning because of the increased demand of getting the booster shot and the uptick in positive COVID cases here locally. So this is just one of 14 state-run mass vaccination sites reopening their doors. This site has been closed since July, and back then officials said the county had resources to meet the slow demand. But now with the high number of cases and more people trying to book their booster shots, the county has their hands full. Warren County spokesperson Don Lehman says it's making for extremely busy times for their vaccination team. But Warren County isn't the only one feeling the impact. So, you know, we are starting, you know, recently, particularly within the last week or two, and particularly in the last couple of days, a renewed interest in individuals getting a booster. The Queensbury site will be open each day from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. The site will be open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for testing, and Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for vaccinations. Officials also saying because of this new variant, they're noticing people booking their first vaccines. All the information on how to book an appointment here, that's on our website at news10.com. Live in Queensbury this morning, Jen Seelig, News 10, ABC. All right, thank you, Jen. Well, the state's new health commissioner begins today. Dr. Mary Bassett will be the head of the state health department. She's taking over for Dr. Howard Zucker, who was appointed by former Governor Cuomo. He announced his resignation back in September, but stayed in the role until Bassett could take over the reins here. She worked under Mayor Bill de Blasio between 2014 and 2018 as the head of New York City's Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Now, when it comes to her goals for the state health position, Dr. Bassett saying, quote, the pandemic underscored the importance of public health while also revealing inequities driven by structural racism. As we move to end the pandemic, we have a unique opportunity to create a state that is more equitable for all New Yorkers. Well, CNN has now suspended anchor Chris Cuomo. Yeah, this is the fallout continues after transcripts. More of them were released mm -hmm. from New York Attorney General Letitia James into the investigation of his brother, former Governor Andrew Cuomo. And the AG's report revealing that Chris Cuomo was very active with the governor's staff in shaping his brother's response to those harassment charges. Also finds that Chris Cuomo used his sources to gather information on when and if more women would come forward with new allegations. Now, Chris Cuomo has not commented at this time. And happening right now, some criticizing SUNY Chancellor Jim Malatras for his role in the Cuomo scandal as well. Mary has more on that part of the story. Mary. Yeah, important to note that this online exchange you're about to hear about happened in 2019 before Malatras became SUNY Chancellor and before former Governor Cuomo was initially accused of sexual harassment. In newly released documents from the AG's office, Malatra sent emails to top-ranking Cuomo aides about his Twitter response to Lindsay Boylan's 2019 tweet, in which she said being a mother while also being a senior staff member in politics was, quote, a toxic and demoralizing experience. Malatra is firing back a tweet saying, quote, I saw someone Twitter bombing about family life on the second floor to get some attention for unrelated political purposes. That's their prerogative. Is working in the chamber tough? You bet. Long hours? Yes, it should be. Now using expletives, Malatra sent additional emails about Boylan. In an interview with New York Now, Malatra responds. I've had strong disagreements um, with colleagues that I've worked with in the past. And this exchange from two and a half years ago uh, was one of those times. Uh, truth is, I'm not proud of the language that I used. Um, 
I convey to use uh, convey my disagreement about my colleague, but I'm proud of my collaborative work in government. I've been government a long time. And News 10 has reached out to Governor Hochul's office to see if Melodris will be investigated or could possibly lose his job because of this. In a statement, we were told, quote, Governor Hochul committed to New Yorkers that no one who was mentioned in the Attorney General's investigation performing inappropriate conduct that contributed to a culture of harassment would be a member of her executive chamber, and she has delivered on that promise. We ask for more clarification when it comes to Melotris. We're still awaiting a response there. For the latest on this story, go to our website. We have it all posted there at news10.com. Happening overnight, the Rensselaer County Legislature passing its budget for next year. The budget includes a 10% property tax cut. It also includes a study to determine if two of the county's senior centers need to be replaced. And there's money in the budget for a new permanent county medical death examiner. City of Troy also passing its budget. Taxes set to increase by 2.28% while remaining under the state property tax cap. Council also passing an ordinance to establish new water and sewer rates. And it comes as Troy has released its proposal for how it will spend more than $13 million in federal COVID relief funding. More than $1.8 million will go toward youth programming and child care. The city is also working with Hudson Valley Community College to help make higher education more affordable. Money is also going toward food and housing assistance, business development, and a public art program. A vote will happen on that proposal tomorrow. Hey, this morning, Saratoga County Sheriff's Office highlighting a milestone in its second chance program. That program is for victims of overdoses and their families, and it raises awareness about the services available to them. The County Sheriff's Office now reporting its 500th post-overdose follow-up. Captain Dan Morley saying, quote, with overdoses still on the rise and with the continued uncertainty surrounding COVID-19, the program is more important than ever. He adds, it's easy to dismiss an overdose as a moral failing, but the reality is that it's the result of a disease. And every one of these is someone, daughter, son, husband, wife, etc. A new law passed that's hoping to provide a boost to the truck driving industry and hopefully ease the supply chain issues that we have been seeing all over. Governor Kathy Hochul signing into law a young adult training program allowing 18 to 20 year olds to obtain their CDL Class A license. New York actually the last state in the country to lower the tractor trailer driving age. However, some industry leaders are skeptical about the change. When you're getting someone just fresh out of CDL school, they don't have any road experience. And of course, just being younger, decision making. Some are welcoming the change, though, saying this will help with the extensive shortage of truck drivers. 18 year olds will have to go to a training program first, have at least 300 hours behind the wheel. And the program will be fully up and running for six months to a year from now. So it will still take some mm -hmm. time, obviously. All right, 610 on this Wednesday morning, a new COVID treatment now awaiting CDC approval. FDA recommending the drug's use in a narrow vote. Who the health agency says should not use this pill, though. And we've got an update on the deadly mass shooting out of a high school in Michigan. Police say they have the suspect in custody where the investigation stands this morning. You're watching News 10 ABC, your local news leader, with Christina Arangio, Ryan Peterson, Mary Wilson, and meteorologist Jill Swed.